STS-80 was a Space Shuttle mission flown by Space Shuttle Columbia. The launch was originally scheduled for 31 October 1996, but was delayed to 19 November for several reasons. Likewise, the landing, which was originally scheduled for 5 December, was pushed back to 7 December after bad weather prevented landing for two days. The mission was the longest shuttle mission ever flown at 17 days, 15 hours, and 53 minutes. Although two spacewalks were planned for the mission, they were both cancelled after problems with the airlock hatch prevented astronauts Tom Jones and Tammy Jernigan from exiting the orbiter. Topic Crew. Topic Crew seating arrangements. During landing, Musgrave remained on the flight deck in order to film the spacecraft's re-entry through the overhead windows. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mission highlights. The mission deployed two satellites and successfully recovered them after they had performed their tasks. Orbiting and retrievable far and extreme ultraviolet spectrometer shuttle pallet satellite 2 ORFE US SPAS 2 was deployed on flight day 1. It was captured on flight day 16. The Wake Shield Facility 3 was deployed on flight day 4, and was recaptured three days later. The mission was the longest mission in Space Shuttle history. On this mission, Story Musgrave became the only person to fly on all five space shuttles, Challenger, Atlantis, Discovery, Endeavour, and Columbia. Musgrave also tied a record for spaceflights, and set a record for being the oldest man in space. Both records have since been surpassed. Mission payload Columbia brought with it two free-floating satellites, both of which were on repeat visits to space. Also, a variety of equipment to be tested on two planned spacewalks was part of the payload. These would have been used to prepare for construction of the International Space Station. Included in the shuttle's payload were Orbiting and retrievable far and extreme ultraviolet spectrometer shuttle pallet satellite 2 ORFE US SPAS 2 Far ultraviolet FUV spectrograph Extreme ultraviolet EUV spectrograph Interstellar medium absorption profile spectrograph IMAPS Surface effects sample monitor SESAM ATV Rendezvous Pre-Development Project ARP. Student Experiment on Astro Spas Seas. Wake Shield Facility WSF3. NIHR-4 Space Experiment Module SEM. EVA Development Flight Tests EDTF5. Crane Battery Orbital Replacement Unit Cable Caddy Portable Work Platform Portable Foot Restraint Work Station PFRWS Temporary Equipment Restraint Aid Terra Articulating Portable Foot Restraint Body Restraint Tether BRT Multi-Use Tether MUT Visualization in an experimental water capillary pumped loop view corporal Biological research in canister brick Commercial materials dispersion apparatus instrumentation technology associates experiment CCMA formerly STL NIHC6 
Commercial MDA IDA experiment CMIX5 Topic Scientific Projects Columbia carried into orbit two satellites that were released and recaptured after some time alone. The first was the orbiting and retrievable far and extreme ultraviolet spectrometer shuttle pallet satellite 2 ORFE US SPAS 2. The main component of the satellite, the ORFE US telescope, had two spectrographs for far and extreme ultraviolet. Another spectrograph, the Interstellar Medium Absorption Profile Spectrograph, was also on board the satellite. Several payloads not relevant to astronomy rounded out the satellite. It performed without problems for its flight, taking 422 observations of almost 150 astronomical bodies, ranging from the Moon to extra-galactic stars and a quasar. Being the second flight of ORFE US SPAS 2 allowed for more sensitive equipment, causing it to provide more than twice the data of its initial run. Also deployed from Columbia was the Wake Shield Facility, WSF, a satellite that created an ultra vacuum behind it, allowing for the creation of semiconductor thin films for use in advanced electronics. WSF created seven films before being recaptured by Columbia's robotic arm after three days of flight. The 12-foot diameter meters craft was on its third mission, including STS-60, when hardware problems prevented it from deploying off the robotic arm. Wake Shield was designed and built by the Space Vacuum Epitaxy Center at the University of Houston in conjunction with its industrial partner, Space Industries, Inc. Another inclusion was a Space Experiment Module The SEM included student research projects selected to fly into space. This was the first flight of the program. Among the experiments conducted were analysis of bacteria growth on food in orbit, crystal growth in space, and microgravity's effect on a pendulum. NIH R4 was an experiment conducted for the National Institute of Health and Oregon Health Sciences University. It was designed to test the effects of spaceflight on circulation and vascular constriction. Biological research in canister brick explored gravity's effects on tobacco and tomato seedlings. Visualization in an experimental water capillary pumped loop view corporal was conducted to test a new idea in thermal spacecraft management. The commercial MDA IDA experiment were a variety of experiments submitted by high school and middle school students sponsored by Information Technology Associates. <laughs> <laughs> Mission background Astronauts were selected for the mission on 17 January 1996. Stacking of the solid rocket boosters SRBs began 9 September 1996. On 18 September, the launch date was bumped back from no earlier than net 31 October to 8 November. Payload doors were closed on 25 September. The following day, the external fuel tank was mated to the SRBs inside the vehicle assembly building. Further progress was delayed while two windows on the orbiter were replaced. NASA feared that they might be susceptible to breakage after seven and eight flights. Columbia was rolled over to the VAB on 9 October to begin final assembly preparations. On the 11th of October, Columbia was mated with the external fuel tank, and the payload was delivered and transferred. Rollout to Pad 39B occurred on the 16th of October, which was followed by flight readiness checks of the main propulsion system. 
After a flight readiness review on 28 October, an additional FRR was requested to further analyze the redesigned solid rocket motor RSRM due to nozzle erosion that occurred on STS-79. On 29, a fuel pump failed, delaying the fueling process of Columbia. The erosion problem led to a week-long delay instituted on 4 November. A launch date of 15 November was set, contingent on a successful Atlas launch two days prior. The forecast of bad weather pushed the launch back even further, to a date of 19 November. <laughs> Wake-up calls NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, which was first used to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by their families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. See also List of human spaceflights List of space shuttle missions Outline of space science STS-78 16-day 21-hour shuttle mission STS-67 16 days 15-hour shuttle mission STS-73 15 days 21 hours shuttle mission